Buenas tardes, Rojo. ¿Cómo estamos? Estamos en una sesión más de La Roca Entrevista. Estamos aquí con Mike T, con Rock School. ¿Cómo estás, Mike? ¿Cómo están, amigos? Un abrazo estás, a todos. ¿Cómo, estamos? ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo están, estamos? Rockers? Bienvenidos a otra entrevista más. Gracias por estar con nosotros en este horario. Esperemos que ya después de comer y con su trago listo en mano. Venga. Pues ya listos con la que... entrevista. El día de hoy vamos a tener una banda danesa de Group Metal Trash. Bueno, ellos, ellos se, se identifican con bastantes géneros del, del metal, pero el día de hoy nos están hablando desde acá, desde Dinamarca. Vamos a tener a dos miembros, al, al guitarrista y al vocalista, que son Rasmus y Jonas. Pues, ¿qué dicen este, si empezamos con las hostilidades? Claro que sí, amigo. Estamos cargados, ahí ya tienen la, la herramienta necesaria para esta entrevista. <risa> estamos listos. Pues, vamos, ¿no? Vamos, ya estamos dos, listos, salud. ya estamos. Iniciemos. Salud, salud, salud. 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 Hi guys, how are you? Hey guys. Hello guys. Hello. Hello from Denmark. Hi guys. Hello. Hello guys. Aquí estamos. Aquí estamos con la gente de the Speed Anger. Here we are with the with the guys of Speed Anger. Um, please guys, tell us tell us about the, how the this band, the Speed Anger, how you came up with the name and also how the the band was born. Just let me tell you tell to the audience this in Spanish. Estamos preguntando que cómo inició la banda y cómo surge el nombre de la banda. So, go ahead, go ahead, guys, please. Well, I mean, uh, I'm, as I'm the only founding member <laughs> in the band right now, so uh, uh, I'll probably have to tell the story, but it's, uh, it was in, uh, actually in 2014, and we, uh, I hooked up with a drummer at a Pretty Maze concert, who was uh, an old friend of mine, and we found out that we both were looking to do some uh, a fresh groove metal. And uh, I had some songs, and I called on my old bass player at the time, uh, who I played with before. And uh, we started to do songs in 2014, looking for a vocalist. Uh, pre we first, we found a guy from Sweden called David. Uh, you've probably seen him in one of the older videos. Uh -huh. Backstabbers, yeah, exactly. Uh, but it didn't work out. It was too hard to do the back and forth. With uh, he was living in Stockholm. Oh, sorry, uh, Gothenburg, uh, and it was just it was it didn't work out. So uh, we ended up with the the uh, second singer of uh, Spirit Anger. Jonas is the third singer. Uh, singer. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so um, uh, Mario, uh, who is a local guy who lives in Copenhagen. And uh, that made it a lot easier, and we were able to uh, finish the first album. And we did that in, I think we came out with that in 2015, I think. 15. Okay. It's all the blur, man. <laughs> but okay. it, uh, <laughs> but it, yeah, I, I, the thing is, I, I, I record, uh, write most of the music, and I produce it, I record it, and I mix it, and I master it. And oh. in this studio, actually, the album oh, was made. Good, yeah, good so it's producer, actually done. Right? Everything is done here, um, so uh, it's a long process for me. So sometimes it ends up in a blur. <laughs> okay, so, okay. Uh, well, the whole work you, you get it in there. You do you do a lot of things in there, right? So you have yeah. a lot of a lot of troubles doing all, getting with, with the time. So uh, Rock School, ¿podría traducir? Sí, claro. Están platicando que eh, fueron este, eh, fundados en el año 2014 que de, de, de hecho eres el único miembro que queda, queda activo, el único miembro fundador de todos los demás, han habido, han habido cambios, por ejemplo, con su, con su solista, y que de, de hecho ahora ya están trabajando en material nuevo, están ahí, de hecho, justo en, en la, me imagino que en la postproducción, y bueno, ya, ya nos, nos irán saliendo más preguntas. 
Uh, just, just to ask you, ask you about the. You're working right now with the the new for the new album, right? You were you were telling me that it's a new album. Where is yeah. what is coming out the the album? When you... That's a good <laughs> question. <laughs> good start. <laughs> Actually, what's happening right now, which you probably know, is that we have a, a global pandemic, and uh, because of Corona. Uh, we are taking our time, actually, because there is no concerts to play. There is no uh, way that we can really uh, promote the album as we want to because of the yeah. ep epidemic. Really. Epidemic. So, yeah. So what we're doing right now is uh, we're just taking our time because also because of we have our own studio. So we have the possibility just to do go to back and forth right. and make sure that yeah. everything becomes like exactly like we want it. Okay. And uh, Jonas is in the process now of uh, writing songs. Most of the songs are written. Some are not Ooh. done. There's like 12 songs, eight songs are almost done, for, but without vocals still. We haven't done vocals yet. And maybe Jonas wants to talk a little bit about his vision about the vocals. Maybe you want to say something? Yeah. Okay. Um, my, my, my style like, used to be more like growling and screams. Um, so okay. we had to like work on the, the clean singing and uh, the, the more shouting part. Um, which is shaving, like, like, it's, it's, uh, it's beginning good. to, to <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, that's what we've been working on a lot. Um, but it's going to be fucking great. I mean, what, what we've been doing for, for, uh, I mean, parallel with writing songs and rehearsing with the new band, basically. Jonas has been and me have been doing some coaching uh, stuff because, as Jonas said, he was mostly uh, doing black and 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 death, which is elements that you will find also on the new albums. But uh, obviously, the more of the the more scream and bra, uh, the, you know that I don't know, Pantera, yeah. Slipknot uh, kind of oh. thing, you know. Okay. Yeah. So we've been building on that and also making sure that Jonas could uh, sing the old songs obviously. Mm -hmm. So we've been going through the repertoire of, of the album and the two EPs and it's been, uh, been a very good process and I'm very impressed with Jonas actually and it's uh, I mean, uh, yeah so, uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's interesting, as you can maybe tell that I'm not like that young <laughs> I've been doing <laughs> Okay. Well, okay, fair enough. We all, yeah, I know. <laughs> but well, I mean, so the thing is that uh, the, before the old, uh, the old singer, the old band, basically, what we had is uh, everybody was in the same age group, but uh, it was starting to. I mean, it was it was a great team, and everybody, as there's no bad feelings, everybody is great friends of mine. And and everybody still uh, loves what we've been doing together and and, and feel proud of that. I'm, I have no doubt. But uh, I kind of needed for the next thing, the next move, to have somebody like Jonas, who's who's a, a fire cracker on stage. Basically, he's wow. an explosion. Nice. So we want it's, to uh, see that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be. It's gonna be I, yeah. I mean, Jonas play live with other bands, and that's one of the reasons okay. that uh, we asked him really to to come here and and do this. So. And you, you, you really, you, you dig doing live. I mean, you love that, right? I love it. It's that's a, that's nice. You're a passionate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just give me a second okay. to translate to the, to the audience. Nos estamos, nos estamos platicando acerca de cómo va el tema de la producción. Este, como estamos viendo, ahí tienen ahí están en su estudio. Eh, Rasmus se encarga de, de bueno, de, de, de producir, este, masterizar la música. Parte de las letras, también nos estaban platicando que estaba, que Jonas también se dedica a hacer una parte de las, de las letras. Él, este, su estilo, nos estaba platicando también su estilo que mete un tanto culturales, este, todo este tipo rolling, todo, es, es una, de las, una de las cosas que trae este, este Jonas, es que se ve que trae, este, aparte que, que nos comentaban que le gusta mucho el escenario, estar ahí en vivo. Ahí, ahorita les vamos a hacer una pregunta acerca de esta situación con la, con la pandemia, con todo el tema del coronavirus. Cómo lo están viviendo, Mike T. Adelante, una pregunta para ellos. Uh, yes, uh, I want to ask you, uh, Jonas. Um, mm -hmm. Hello, Jonas. Uh, uh, how are you? Are you you are uh, new in the band? How is yes. uh, how do you feel uh, right now with the band? And what is your uh, um, objectives to the future with this band? Um, 
I'm feeling uh, very good and I'm very proud to be in, in, in Spiranga. Um, okay. And just like waiting to to the pandemic to uh, go, yeah, to go over so we can come out and conquer the whole world. That's, uh, yeah, that's the plan, exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh, and can you tell me uh, what are your influences in as you as a vocalist? Oh, there are like many, many influences. Uh, uh, I think. Uh, what was the, the the reason you start to to be a music a musician? Musician. I actually yeah. uh, started playing uh, drums when I was yeah. 10. Okay, uh, you're a drummer. And I was like, huh? You also uh, are a uh, you are a drummer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drum, um, okay. Okay. Playing okay. drums because of bands like uh, Metallica and Tiger okay. Negative and bands that I grew up with. Um, when I was 16, so five years ago, I started uh, to like wonder how it would be to like be like more more in front of the crowd because as okay. a drummer, you you're not really as much out as uh, the other band yeah so i started started just practicing in the shower yeah, and uh, then uh, yeah <laughs> that's then it just evolved from there i mean if, it, if if you can practice in the shower and become what i have seen him <laughs> okay <laughs> at the stage <laughs> that's for real that's for real <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> that's awesome. funny actually yeah Okay. Rock Spool, ¿también la, la traducción? Vas, 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 vas. Estoy, estoy repasando sí. todas las preguntas. Mira, este, lo que nos estaba diciendo este, Jonas es que, bueno, pues, sus influencias desde muy pequeño, pues, este, empezó a escuchar a Metallica. Eh, y bueno, pues este, él, él también, lo, lo que nos estaba diciendo es que es baterista. Él también inició, de hecho, inició con la batería. Inició tocando la batería y, este, bueno, poco a poco se fue eh, entra, entrando en la parte de la voz. Y bueno, lo que nos estaba comentando ahorita es que pues practicaba, ¿no?, en la ducha, este, Exacto. algunas canciones, ¿no?, y lo que comentaba Rasmus es que, pues, es donde, de ahí es de donde sale el poder, ¿no?, la furia de, de, de Jonas al momento de plasmarlo en el, en el escenario, ¿no? Vientos, vientos, vientos. Mi sí. rock school, adelante con tu pregunta. Sí, bueno, para todos los, los rockers creo que siempre es importantísimo cuando una banda nos gusta, que, que, que en especial a mí Spitanger me ha gustado mucho, saber cuáles fueron sus influencias, ¿no?, cómo... cómo ¿Cómo banda, fueron ¿cómo transformándose en, en esa banda a partir de lo que les gusta? Entonces, la pregunta sería que, que Speed Tanger nos hable sobre sus influencias. ¿Qué, qué tipo de, de, de bandas les, les, ah, les inspiraron para, para ser que, músicos? Para que empezaran a generar este tipo de música, ¿no? So, guys, the, the, the question for you is, tell us about your influence. Which bands inspired you to be a, a musician? What kind of, of bands create your, your, your sound? So, so, you became, so you became Speed Tanger. So... so... What what kind of music? Or, well, what influences you had to make uh, to create this, this speed anger or make the the power of speed anger? Okay, so this I mean this is interesting because we are basically two generations right here. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. so but 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 we actually do share a lot of bands that we like, and that's very important because otherwise I don't think Jonas would be interested and it wouldn't work out. But the thing is that so obviously. And you might have guessed this, but uh, Spillinger is very much uh, influenced by bands like Testament, Pantera, Machine Head. Of course. Also, uh, a little bit of Slipknot and, uh, you know, in Flames, uh, At the Gates, uh, stuff like that, right? Okay. But we, and that's, I mean, that is our DNA, the groove thing. The groove is really important for Spillinger, and you might have noticed that. So, yeah. especially yeah. Testament is, personally, Testament is one of my favorite bands. I mean, it's... Uh, It's just, uh, it's, it's, it's actually a great joy to see them kind of getting their second wind as we as we uh, seen the last couple of years. And they've yeah. been uh, doing albums again and, and after a long break. Uh, but one of the bands that, and that's might not that obvious, but one of the bands that me and Jonas uh, share is a band like Cal Decapitation. Okay. You know that. And uh, I think Jonas should talk a little bit about that and why he loves that band because... Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cattle decap for my was like my way into uh, brutal like death metal uh, and like okay. so much more like yeah, more extreme uh, metal. Amonamart, um, um, yeah. like Amonamart, you, you like Amonamart? 
I'm a number nine. I'm on a map. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. You like it, that kind of the stuff. The stuff like that, you, you like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I like uh, like black metal and death metal and like most most metal. What um, about the, the old school? Uh, about, uh, no, I don't know, Nepon Bay. What do you think of Pantera? I love Pantera. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> He wouldn't be in the band. He was not. He wouldn't be allowed in the band if he didn't like Venture. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, but like I, yeah, love bands like Exodus and Pantera and Metallica and all that uh, stuff. Um, but Cattle Decap is my biggest inspiration um, as becoming a vocalist. Uh, Travis Ryan is my favorite vocalist, um, and all the lyrics he writes is fucking amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that that's my biggest inspiration, and that's yeah. actually that touches, if if I may, if that touches on something that is actually always been important for Speed Anger is that lyrics is sometimes an uh, underestimated part of metal. I mean, oh, never. some some, <laughs> some very, band, important, very important exactly, part. Exactly, that's my point. Yeah, but I yeah. see a lot of the new that, that new bands that exactly, and that's what I mean. So that's what, and we also share a lot that, that we want to have substance in the in the lyrics. And, thing. And, and we're and we're thankful that you think about the lyrics so much that you take it so so uh, you take care of the lyrics so much. That's very important. The fans love yeah. that. We love yeah. to to have good lyrics and also a good guitar. Also, in that part of the guitar and your influences about uh, with Pantera, mm -hmm. um, I have heard a lot of uh, school harmonics. Some things like Diamond the Real. So I, I think you also have this kind of influences on riffs, like Pantera style. So actually, there, there's one song that I, I love, the, one of the most I love, is the Welcome to the Real World. That was a, a really, really, really nice song. And there's a lot of like, a, uh, there's there kind of a, like a sense like a, of Pantera, Pantera scene. Mm -hmm. And I love it, I love it. Also, I want to say that you're a great guitar player. You're, <laughs> Thank you, man. Well, well, I appreciate that. Thank you, man. That's, yeah. I mean, I, I'm happy that you can hear that influence because I, I, it's not, there's no secret. Everybody knows me, knows this, that Dimebag Daryl is the biggest guitar player yeah. in the world for me. I mean, he is, he was the, the huge, great, great, great. Uh, I mean, he was, he was not, he was not the fastest. He was not the, you know, whatever, but he was the, he was the, he had the best sound. He has the best the feeling best and he was yeah. just, everything around him was perfect in my opinion because he, he he was so unique i mean you could hear just a little part of the song and you know that was him playing and that i mean for me that is very very the, the original thing about about that is so amazing so um, yeah so i'm happy i'm very happy that you can tell that and it's uh, it's definitely not something we we're, uh, we're very i mean that's where we're coming from that's part of the dna absolutely Uh, the fun fact, actually, uh, I said that I met the first drummer at a Pretty Mates concert. Do you know the band uh, Pretty Mates? Pretty Mates. No, no the Danish, Danish heavy metal band. It's actually quite old. It's, it's, they played around the world and stuff like that. But the, the funny story about that is that the first drummer and, uh, and I got together at a Pretty Mates concert, but the guy who's playing in the band now is the drummer from Pretty Mates. <laughs> so oh, wow. so wow. he's, he's actually... Wow. But, really cool. I mean, That's cool. But he's an old... He was, yeah. He was no friend of mine before that, so uh, that's one of the reasons I was at the concert. But he's he's part of the team now for for the album, uh, and then we have a bass player called Chais. Uh, so Alan Chikai is the drummer, and then we have uh, Chais on bass, who played in another band called Hellos, a Danish band. Uh, so that's the team around the album, and uh, we are what we're doing right now, focusing on. And we don't know if they're going to be the team going out on tour, but they are the team that writing the album right now. So uh, so that's uh, oh, fantastic. And okay. uh, let us I just want to ask uh, you a little, a little wait, 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 uh, wait, wait, question. Yeah. Uh, let, let us translate to the audience. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, so, okay. uh, aquí lo que nos estaban comentando acerca de, de sus influencias, tienen mucha, mucha influencia de Pantera, de Testament. Nos están, uh, nos están comentando. O sea, delante de Rock School, también si quieres agregar ahí algo. The sleep, not Exodus. Este, okay. Sí, no, no, nos comentaban de todo, todo este tema, todas sus influencias. No, también nos comentaban acerca de, del tema de las letras, de las canciones, que ellos para ellos es muy importante. Para, tanto Jonas y, y Rasmus entienden muchísimo en el tema de las letras, del escribir todas las canciones. Y sí, es algo que hace mucha diferencia. Y me parece que es muy importante. Yo creo que todos los fans, 
cuando estamos escuchando una canción, no nada más estamos escuchando la música, nos la música. Letra, sí, y eso la da mucho poder, y nos hace sacar muchas cosas, ¿no? Es que, es, es, por eso es la importancia de, de las letras. Eh, Ox Cool, este, vas con pregunta. Este sí, sí, Ay, sí. Mike, perdón, Ox Cool, Mike quería preguntar ahí algo. Ah, sí, cierto, solo quería preguntarle claro. para complementar la pregunta que le habías hecho a Rasmus, este, que bueno, estaban tocando el tema de Damon Darrell eh, como guitarrista y la influencia que es notoria en la música de, de Speed Anger. Eh, I want to ask you, Rasmus, eh, if you could take a class or play a gig with one of your favorite guitarists, eh, who is the who is going to be that guitarist? And I Why? answer I answer because of your uh, ex, uh, uh, what you said. Mm. Uh, is that Damon Darrell is your favorite guitarist? Am yeah, I, I mean, am I right? that would be the, that would be the okay. obvious answer. But okay. if I should pick someone else, because that that okay. is the obvious answer. No, no, but, no. but if you pick someone else, okay, another, it, would okay. be, uh, it would be Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. Oh, nice! Wow. Well, Definitely well, Jimi Hendrix. Big, yeah. Big, really good. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. Really good. yeah. I mean, because he's the he's basically the grandfather of rock and roll guitar playing. Exactly. You know? exactly. And could so, be the I reason mean, that, that you initiate to play the guitar. What's, what was that? Sorry. Uh, it could be Jimi Hendrix the, the principal reason to you to start to play the guitar. Actually, yes. Yes, it is. It was actually. That's actually why I started playing guitar. Exactly why. Okay, because wow. I started. I mean, I started. I think I was like 17, maybe. I, yeah. I started playing guitar quite late. Uh, uh, so I, I think I, I actually like Jonas started playing drums, uh -huh. <laughs> but I was not that good at it. So I, I thought oh, I'd, okay. I'd better find another instrument. Uh, and then I started and I listened to Jimi Hendrix. So everybody talked about it at the time uh, in my in my circle. And I was yes. like, I, I, I went to the library, borrowed an album, and I remember putting it on. And it was on vinyl, by the way. So it's that old. <laughs> But it, it, I, I remember putting it on and yeah. I, I was like, what was that? I, that was what? I, I, I better listen to it again. And, and then I kept listening to it for two months. Just that album, you know, over and over. And after the two months, I, I was like, yeah, I, I think I need to play guitar. That's what I want to do, you know. And that was Jim Hendrix. So it was solely his fault, actually. So, uh, uh, what is your favorite song of Jimi Hendrix? Oh man, that's that's actually. That's very uh, difficult. Oh, yeah. 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 But you know what? I'm gonna th I'm gonna give you an answer that you won't expect, okay. and that is cross town traffic. Uh, cross town traffic. And I that's because, that. and it's interesting because it's not he's not doing a lot of solos there and stuff like that. But he no. he for me it's like almost a hip hop song, but it's yes. just written in 1967 or something like that. Yeah. So I mean, he was a visionary songwriter as well. That's actually what I think. You know, it's he was he wrote great songs, and uh, obviously he was an amazing guitar player, but he was also a good songwriter, and that's kind of forgotten sometimes so uh, but but I, i do love all this stuff and obviously i love purple haze and hey joe and, hey and i played all those songs you know so ah bueno él estaba preguntando para complementar la pregunta de dani de daniel el movidas que eh, bueno pues una de sus influencias eh, que era damon darrell yo le quería hacer la pregunta de cuál sería el, el guitarrista con el que pudiera tomar una clase o, o, as, o tocar un palomazo, digamos, ¿no? Y pues obviamente la respuesta era este, Damon Darrell, pero también complementó que eh, eh, Jimi Hendrix realmente es el primer guitarrista. Otro dios, que, otro dios, Jimi Hendrix. Que es eh, la influencia más importante para él, para, pues, para iniciar como guitarrista, ¿no? Y este, pues, le había preguntado también, una de las este, preguntas que igual es muy difícil de contestar para muchos es... Que, ¿Cuál es la canción favorita para el de Jimi Hendrix? Y, pues, me dijo, sí, es muy difícil, pero se le ocurrió ahorita este que es de Cross Crown Traffic, que también es una muy buena canción. Este, de hecho, claro. ya he, yo he escuchado varios, varios covers de esta rola, es muy buena y este, sí, no es una no, rola no, clásica. No es propiamente del estilo clásico de Hendrix. Es, exactamente, lo, como, lo, como lo dices, Chris, no es una rola clásica de Jimi Hendrix con esos riffs tan este, estridentes y potentes, sino que es un poco más melódico, digamos, ¿no? Sí, más groovy. Eh, Ajá, Exacto, así exactamente. es. Exactamente, ese es, 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 es el punto. 
Correcto. Y sí, también, también platicaba que, de, de hecho, la razón por la cual se convirtió en guitarrista fue justamente por la, la explosión mental que, que, le, que le causó escuchar a Hendrix causó? y que Exacto. lo hizo ya, ya pues, digamos que para, para edades relativas mundiales ya un poco grande, por ahí de los 17, 18 años. Exacto. Exacto. Pues, Kurt, ¿Quieres ahí este, este, una pregunta? Me lanzo sí, yo. Sí, sí, te, tengo una pregunta justo de, de, del tema que estábamos platicando apenas, de, de, lo que, de lo que resaltabas, mi movidas, sobre la importancia de, de las letras, ¿no? En estos tiempos que, que, que según yo, ¿no? No sé qué tanto opinen los, los rockers afuera, pero según yo, el rock específicamente siempre ha tenido una, una parte importantísima en las letras, ¿no? Siempre está distinguido por ser letras con, con mayor contenido, con, con mayor intención, con, contando, contando historias, más allá de decir estupideces como otros géneros, ¿no? Y, y, y yo quiero, quiero saber eso un poquito sobre, sobre Speed Anger. Entonces, la, la, la pregunta, the, the question, guys, is ¿Mm? the, how would you describe the messages that Speed Anger transmits in your songs? With, with, wow. with the lyrics, with the lyrics, the, the lyrics. With the, the lyrics, the, specific the, in the lyrics. What is the message that the, 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 lyric, the lyrics have? What's your philosophy? Exactly. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's it's actually a little unfair for me to comment on that because uh, the guy who wrote it was Mario, the previous singer. Mario. He, he yeah. solely wrote the lyrics. I mean, I had nothing to do with that. But obviously, okay. it was part of the whole process. Everybody was taking part of, of writing songs, uh, complimenting on lyrics, reading stuff, you know, and giving constant uh, criticism and stuff like that. But, but I, I, what I can say is that the overall idea, and that's something that uh, uh, Jonas... Uh, uh, and me share as well as well and going forward with the new album is going to be some some of the same stuff is that it's a comment about that time we're living in so it's it has i mean it's both political in some ways not not like a political party no mm -hmm. but no no affiliation like that but it's a, it's a comment on the political situation and it's a movement uh, or yeah or i mean it, mostly it's a critic of authorities really okay <laughs> i mean There, there's yep. something. About, sorry, sorry, but in, in that point, uh, let me stop you in that point because there, there's the the EP, the the last EP you, you released, yeah. in, in mm -hmm. the 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 ballot or, or the bullet, oh, yeah. the, the speech from Malcolm Malcolm X. Yeah, am I right? There's a there's a, a political thing that that's what you're saying exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know that's, it's very great that you pick up on that because and that I had part I had a bit of part in that actually deciding the name and the, the point obviously the, the point of the ballot or the bullet basically means that well if you're if you're uh, the the uh, what's it called the the people who are making the decisions the government or whatever you want to call it, the president or the tyrant or whatever political leader there is at the time. Well, you have a choice, basically, in the end. You have a choice. You can either let people vote and have influences, or you can expect a revolution. The ballot or the bullet, right? right? So that's okay. not the point. And, the, and, and it's and very beautiful picked up that it's a Malcolm X. Actually, it's something he said. And if we have the, the part in the, in the EP, we've sampled that little uh, reference. And one of the reasons, I mean, a Malcolm X was... For me, he was not really affiliated with anybody. He was he was a he was a critic of the power structure in in the U.S. And he was one of the. I mean, if you ever seen a, a, a TV debate with Malcolm X, there's a couple of them lying around on YouTube. And it, I mean, I've never seen a man so so sharp and so eloquently uh, framing framing his uh, his ideas and. I mean, he was he was uh, he was a big man in my opinion. So so yeah. I mean, and that's the point. That's the the point we're coming from. So we we comment on things. Uh, we comment on uh, the power structures and the inequality and stuff like that. I mean, without really, without we, we don't want to be affiliated with anybody. <laughs> we're not oh. we're not a party or anything like that. We don't want to preach to people like that. We don't want to mm -hmm. tell them what to do. But we want to criticize things we think is unfair and and. Uh, And constructions of power that is not, you know, like yeah. making people think about yeah. stuff. Okay. Exactly. Like that's actually a good point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty cool to, uh, to have this uh, these ideas and and get to the people with these ideas. And sometimes people need these lyrics to to shout out with music. So that's that's exactly. great. Exactly. They're doing that, guys. You know. Exactly. And and, and right. actually for me. And for us, I think is that the metal is an oppositional music form, right? So what we like metal because it's not it's not mainstream. 
Mm. We like it because it's underground mostly, and it's, it's, it's uh, for people who is outside of the normal commercial, I mean, mainstream society. Yeah. And yeah, so I, I feel, I, I, now I see that you have that poster of Kill Em All in the background. Yeah, yeah. Like that. Oh, yeah. 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 exactly. <laughs> and an yeah. amazing album. But also, I mean... He's the, a huge fan of Metallica. And, uh, sorry. Metallica always have been, in my opinion, that kind of band. So they, they were not affiliated with anybody, but they have that voice of criticism of the yeah. power structures. And that's hmm. so we're basically just picking up on that and going on with that, you know. So, oh, that's, 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 that's right. Brent, fucking, fucking uh, you're that. gonna steal. You're gonna steal. Uh, have this uh, social message in, in your uh, next album. You're gonna. Uh, you're gonna What follow you this. Line? Line? I, that's that's one. That one is for Jonas. Jonas. Uh, yeah. Right yeah. That's, How do you um, think? Yeah, we, that, we, Jonas. We, we definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Um. <clears throat> And well, again, I have some, yeah, some some views on on the opposition as well, and the the government. So that's definitely going to be on on the new album as well. Okay. And what's interesting for me is because, as I said earlier, we are two different generations, and and yes. Jonas is basically, I mean, I'm the generation. generation on the way out, but he's the generation on the way in, right? And mm -hmm. and, and and the point is that, I mean. What we are leaving to these guys with global climate catastrophe, pandemics, and a political landscape that is insane, in my opinion. You know, if you look at USA right now, it's just what the hell? I mean, what a clusterfuck, right? So, so uh, I think that's actually one of the things I love about having the Jonas as, as, as a young guy in this band to give him a voice, basically. I mean, you know, we'll build the music around it, but give him a voice and let him tell what kind of struggles because they will struggle <laughs> of what yeah. they're saying we have immense problems in this world right now that uh, we don't know how to solve but i just want to say one thing about that as not to be too uh, you know uh, okay. dystopian but but the thing is okay. uh, we can solve these problems it just I, and it, it just dawned on me because i've been quite pessimistic about it for a long time now but it, i don't know if you how much you guys are into this, but the new vaccine that's been done for COVID-19, yeah. it, it, it dawned upon me that what they've done, they've done something that usually takes like seven to ten years, right? And they Correct. did it in Correct. one year. Or less, actually. Maybe six months, uh, right? Actually, actually, ten months. Ten months, oh. yeah. But yeah. that's amazing. And, that's, and, and, and what is amazing about that is when they work together across the borders and decide that we need to do something because it's imperative that we do that, it's actually possible. It's still possible for the world to do something constructive and fix problems. And they actually seem to have fixed this. Let's let's see how it goes. And people have to take it and it has to work and all that kind of stuff. And we still have to be, you know, uh, let's see how it goes. But still, it's still quite amazing task they've done. And I just want to say that what if we do that kind of thinking, but look at the climate problems? And look at the people who live without food, you know, uh, exactly. just look at malaria or whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's possible to fix this stuff if we want yes. to do it. So okay. that's just just to try and be a little bit optimistic about the future. And maybe this guy has a chance. <laughs> <laughs> you have the responsibility. Okay. Mira, básicamente les preguntamos so, sobre qué tipo de mensaje, qué tipo de intención y qué nos cuentan en sus letras. Y nos comenta Rasmus que desde, bueno, que él, él no escribió la, las canciones que hasta el momento conocemos de Speed Anger, pero que, que la, la línea va a seguir siendo la misma, con, que, con todo de que ahora, ahora, la, ahora las escribe, exacto, ahora las va a escribir Jonas, pero la línea es la misma. Básicamente es, es hablar de la situación real de lo que estamos viendo, que si bien son apolíticos, totalmente apolíticos y, y apartidistas, sie siempre han mantenido una intención de, de, de contar las cosas tal cual son, de lo que le, le aqueja a la sociedad, de lo que pasa, respe respetando la, la historia de, de, de la música en el rock y en el metal, de, de protesta y de señalamiento, ¿no? Y que de hecho, obviamente, como Jonas representa una, una generación de, de, de brecha que existe entre, entre Rasmus y él en la banda, pues su, su visión es un poco distinta y va a ser más, más, más certera conforme lo que está pasando, que es, que es inexplicable, eh, añadiendo el tema de, de la vacuna, ¿no? de, de las últimas noticias, y que para, para, para su visión, que, que ojalá podamos escuchar algo de eso en el, en el disco siguiente, es que 
de, eh, todo esto nos demuestra que cuando el mundo se une se logran cosas que, que casi imposibles, como que el, el récord de una vacuna eran pues, entre 7 y 10 años, y que ahora que el mundo se unió con esto que nos está partiendo la madre a todos, en 10 meses con esfuerzos, esfuerzos económicos, esfuerzos médicos, esfuerzos de ciencia, se, se est estemos logrando por fin ya llegar a, a un término de, de arreglo y, y que eso va a ser una parte muy interesante también del contenido de, de Speed Anger para su siguiente disco. Sí, y también ag agregar ahí que este, mencionaba que sí, 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 de cierta forma no son, están metidos un poco ahí con algunos temas, un mensaje un poco, un tanto político de protesta, criticar algunas cosas, como lo mencionábamos en el anterior EP que lanzaron, que fue en 2018, el de The Ballot or the Bullet, que la traducción sería como que la boleta o, o bueno, la boleta de... O la bala. O la bala. Ajá, o sea, es un tanto lo que llevan un poco el, el, el mensaje de ellos. Y este, bueno, pues nos dejan ver ahí mucho, mucho el impacto y la, la voz que tiene Speed Anger y la voz que buscan con, con Jonas, que Jonas, este, como, usted, como letrista ahora, lo que buscan es eso, tener esa, esa, esa voz que ojalá, que nos decía Rasmus, que ojalá esa voz dé un impacto para hacer un cambio en, en, en el mundo. Uh -huh. Si me dejan, este, creo, creo que es momento de, de hacerles una pregunta, la pregunta de cajón. Sí, la, la, la pregunta ya, ya se volvió la de, la de la casa. La, la de la casa. La pregunta que, les, que Rockers ya les han de haber escuchado por acá es, ¿y estos personajes que tenemos acá, que tenemos Speed Anger, qué harían si tuvieran, si tuvieran un súper y tuvieran algún personaje musical enfrente y, lo, y tuvieran la oportunidad de atropellarlo con el carrito del super, por supuesto, porque si no Facebook se pone de loco, ¿a qué personaje atropellarían? Vamos a, vamos a ver qué nos dicen ellos. Guys, here's, here's a question. Here's, this, this question is uh, like a... All round. An every time question, every time question with, with you here. And this is... Imagine you have a supermarket, supermarket, supermarket shopping cart and you can run over with it a music start that you hate. Who would you pick? Yes. Yeah, you used to take them. Yeah. To... <laughs> <laughs> Trolley or uh, like a whole like a uh, van or how? I oh, think it's just, it's just yeah. a trolley, right? It's just yeah, yeah, small because, because yeah. Facebook, Facebook is Facebook is with his with the policies of Facebook, we cannot say that you can run over with a with a car. So you just have a super, like a shopping okay. cart. Yeah. You go for yeah. a shopping yeah. cart and you can run over. <laughs> But very hard, very very hard. Very hard. Okay, but like one thing, like running into people with a trolley is not not going to hurt them, but just like annoy them a little bit. Okay. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. Yeah. exactly. exactly, exactly. But, so the question is, who do you like? Would you like to annoy? Exactly. <laughs> oh, just annoy. I think like most of the Danish pop uh, musicians. Really, In the Danish? What? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, <laughs> we can also go like oh. international global. <laughs> yeah. What's well, that? that? Mm -hmm. All the pop, like the, the Danish pop music the pop is just so like pop music. generic and yeah, plastic. Nothing. That's that's yeah, plastic. That's a good word. Yeah. Plastic. Yeah. I mean, but it, oh, it's okay, it, it's that. It's all. It's everywhere like that. I yeah, I want to guess those. Yeah. Well, you guys are as well. I mean, because what happens. In the industry right now is yeah. that music has become entertainment right so what happens is that when music is entertainment and not art which i think is an art is, is for me it's an art form but but yes. when it becomes entertainment it becomes a, something that people need to make money from and they do it like it's like a factory they just pull it out there and and it's and as you always it's generic it's boring and it's bad and you today with all the equipment you have stuff you possibilities you don't have to sing it's right you man, can just be man. whatever you don't even have to look good because they can just photoshop you afterwards so yeah. i mean it's just it's just yeah so if we could do anything we would actually run every kind of pop music over with a big truck <laughs> but, I mean, but, but if you come to we, we but we're nice people so we'll just Just annoy them with a shopping cart. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Bueno, lo, lo que nos comentan es que, bueno, realmente a cualquier este músico de, de pub de allá de, de Dinamarca serían a los que estarían este, atropellando con el carrito del súper. Bueno, realmente pegándoles un golpecito por ahí, molestarlos un poco. Dejarlos a, a, a pendejados, como decimos por acá. A poner un poco, a dejarlos un poco pendejados, nada más por el, por el hecho de que están haciendo, como que están tocando música muy, eh, muy bastante culerona, por decirlo de otra forma. Cooler, ahora sí que, cooler dance kings. 
<risa> para que se juegue como se juega en danés. Pero este, esa, esa, esa es la cuestión del, del, del punto ahí. No quisieron soltar nombres de alguna, algún personaje famoso por ahí. Pero bueno, lo vamos a dejar, lo vamos a dejar en paz. Sí. Mike T, algo. Venga, vas con vas, vas a yes, eh, Bueno, yo quiero preguntarle este, a Rasmus. Este, sabemos que hacen el festival de. Eh, metal en Copenhague eh, cada año y este yo sé que él es parte de organización digo aparte como músico ingeniero y productor también sé que es este or, parte de la organización o, o creo que es el CEO de, de, del festival y pues mi pregunta es este qué posibilidad hay de que pudieran eh, llevar este festival eh, a otros países digo en un futuro sabemos ahorita que está el tema de la pandemia pero que en un futuro pudieran este, llevar este festival pues a otros países y obviamente pues incluir este Latinoamérica, ¿no? Este, que vinieran a, a que trajeran bandas, ¿no? De, de, de allá de, de, Dinam de Dinamarca, este, ¿qué posibilidad hay, hay de esto? So Rasmus, uh, I want to ask you, uh, I know uh, you are a musician, a producer and engineer and also I know that you are a, a part of the producers or, or organization uh, the organization of uh, the Copenhagen Metal Fest. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, uh, so my question is that uh, Maybe in, in the future you could, uh, what is the possibility that you could take the, that festival to other countries? Uh, Latin America, for example. Wow. Um, Mexico, uh, of America. course, please. That's, um, that's actually, uh, that's a very interesting question. I, I, I can't say I've thought about that, uh, but that would, that would be, that would be killer, man. That, that's a great idea. <laughs> that would be awesome. But, I think it would be a great project. So yeah, you can, can, I mean, so it, all, all the music in Denmark, <laughs> in Denmark yeah. also could, could it's, hear here it's in Mexico or in Colombia, yeah. Argentina. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, I know yeah. that there's a lot of fans of music and also and, uh, I know that uh, the you thing could is have that, success uh, the, yeah. the festival but here in, the, in Latin America. What is very important to mention is that Copenhagen Metal Fest is only for Danish bands. And yes, the idea, so, of, okay. so uh, th that's also why it's a great idea. I mean, that's why I love what, exactly. what you suggest that, because yeah. uh, I mean, the idea of the festival basically is that we thought that the Danish bands needed a bigger platform, okay. uh, especially Copenhagen, which is obviously our uh, 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 capital city, uh, yes. and. We have a big festival here. It's called Copenhagen. It's a commercial festival with uh, international bands, stuff like that. And the, okay. it's a great festival, and it's quite big. I think. Do you know how many people are there now? It's twenty-five thousand. Twenty-five thousand. Yeah. So it's quite big. Twenty-five thousand. I mean, it's small. It's, it's okay. we are eight hundred people. So I mean, we're small great compared number, to that. Great number. Yeah, yeah. But but the point is that that they what we we kind of were missing at that festival was some more yeah. Danish bands, and we we were we were missing a platform for the upcoming talents really so so okay. Copenhagen Metal Fest is basically made to focus on the upcoming talents but having some of the biggest Danish bands playing on the big stage we have a big stage and two smaller stages so we have yeah. three stages and we have we have 24 bands on over uh, three stages on two days and two days and, okay and, and the, the idea is basically to get people in there and see all the new bands that's what we're what we're trying to do Uh, okay. We had to cancel this year, and it was very unfortunate because we were almost sold out. And that will be our, we only have one oh. year we started last yeah. year. Uh, we're, so we're that sorry. Was, yeah, but I mean, it's a uh, shame. on the other hand, everybody's in the same boat, right? So we were not yeah. alone in that. Uh, everybody was uh, obviously uh, under the influence of, of, of the pandemic. But uh, we have already uh, booked new dates, so we will be coming back in uh, in um, in September uh, uh, next year. Uh, okay. I think it's the 17th and 18th of September. I think. I, I think so. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not quite sure right now. But okay. uh, and we um, still will only have Danish bands. We are talking about uh, if we could, how we could develop it on the longer run. But right now we're focused us on just getting being establishing the, the the festival because we are very young okay. and very new. But okay. I mean, the idea of bringing. Danish bands in the future, yes. outside Denmark, that would be that's a that's great, a great, great project. Would, would be great. And, uh, we we would like to uh, now that we are live, uh, we would like to uh, Speed Anger give us some backstage passes to to go to, to, to the show. <laughs> yeah, of course, man. Absolutely, uh, also, guys, I want, <laughs> You know what? I'll do something. I, I mean, 
I can't pay your a plane ticket, but I'll, if you if you can come to Denmark, I guarantee you I have backstage passes for all. Oh, of you. That's really cool. oh yeah, that, we're, that gonna be, we're gonna get there. For that. We're gonna get there. So uh, if you can make yeah. it here, I'll I'll make sure you you get the best treatment, man. Oh, uh, also, okay. I want to I want to ask you if if there's a possibility that you uh, that the band Speedanger could, could play in Latin America. Well, uh, maybe Mexico, maybe Mexico, maybe Mexico, the festival, Mexico, the Copenhagen Mexico. festival, uh, could be more difficult. But the band, uh, what is the possibility that you can play in Latin America next year? Would you like to do that? Yeah. Like, we, we would, would you like to, to come play to play here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Actually, actually, we've been actually we, we were uh, we were offered uh, yeah. to go on a mini tour with a, a, yeah. a very close uh, a, a friend of us who was doing some shows in in uh, yes. in, in Mexico. Wow. Uh, but it was just it was not working out the time. It was in after I think after the album. So I think uh, okay. or just before we did the album, I think maybe we were offered to go on a small tour with like five shows in Mexico okay. and one of them would be in Mexico city. But at the time it was just, it was not possible because I think we were between singers. I think that was it. So oh. we didn't have, we, so we didn't, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, and, and unfortunately, I mean, he did go with another band. So he took, I think it took, he took two other Danish bands with him. So the tour became to happening. It happened, but we were just not part of it. And uh, I think okay. he's, He's not doing it anymore, unfortunately, but he still has the contacts there. So, I mean, uh, it is not entirely impossible. And, I mean, if you guys, uh, I mean, yeah, I, I, we, we would love to go. Uh, without a doubt, we would love to go. So, I mean, the plan is that when we do the album, okay. and we, uh, I, I'm not sure, we'll try and shove it around. The last one we did, we basically put out ourselves and gave it away for free. Everybody can download us, download it for free on our website. Okay. In 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 a, a high a high definition, but uh, the next album is not gonna be for free. It's gonna be maybe I will put it out ourselves. Maybe we'll try and shop it. We don't know yet what's gonna happen okay. because we need to be. I mean, we we won't do any of this stuff until that it's done. When we have the album, we know what it is. What kind of album we will be? We'll start looking at at the record companies and. Maybe we will decide to do it ourselves because there is some advantages. I have my own uh, label, by the way, an independent label. So, uh, so we we'll, might put it out on that again. But we will uh, definitely try to promote it outside Denmark. So we will go and look to have uh, tours outside Denmark a lot, actually. And okay. what I can see from our Spotify playlists and from that. That America, US, and then also actually US, I think is our second biggest streaming uh, okay. place. And actually, I see Latin America also. So, I mean, that would be that would be absolutely great. great. Yeah. yeah, maybe we can. Um, uh, I have a very some very good friends in a band called Artillery. You might know that band. Uh, what, what band? Artillery. Artillery. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Danish Danish metal band. Yeah, yeah. 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 came out yeah, at the same time as Metallica. Know. Uh, yeah. They actually uh, have a yeah. lot of contacts there. So yeah, if yeah. I can convince them to go on tour and bring us with them, we'll see what happens. But uh, that's, 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 some, that's something like that could maybe happen, you know. So we'll, we'll, we'll definitely look into that. And we would love to go, man. Absolutely. That's uh, well, basically... We hope... We, we yeah, hope we, I hear you. I hear you. Respect for that. We're, we will be waiting to, to have you right here in, in Mexico City. Hello, let's translate to the audience. So, uh, oh. we're talking about que ahí estaba diciendo Mike T que era si habría posibilidad de que bueno sabemos que, que Rasmus es el organizador del de festival de Copenhague sí sí bueno lo que comentaba este Rasmus es que sí efectivamente es este el organizador del, del festival de metal en Copenhague y este es un festival local en el cual solo reúnen bandas de pues de Dinamarca entonces, bueno, la pregunta que le hice era acerca de que si había posibilidad de que pudieran llevar el festival a otros a otros países, eh, digo, pues por eso obviamente para, eh, pues, eh, tener más este conocimiento, ¿no?, de, de, de las bandas de metal que hay en Dinamarca, y pues él contestó que pues era un, una, gran, una gran idea que ahorita, pues por el tema de la pandemia, es imposible este, ahorita pues, realizarlo, de hecho, pues estaban, tenían, tienen planeado hacer unas presentaciones en septiembre, pero que ahorita pues era algo difícil, este, lo que sí comentaban es que 
eh, al momento de sacar el disco, pues iban a ver la posibilidad de, este, pues, de armar algo y poder venir, ¿no? Y este, también estaban comentando acerca de, de que, bueno, pues están viendo si van a poder sacar el disco ya en un formato en físico, ¿no? Este, eh, digo, y también ya, ya teniendo el producto, ya ahora sí que en las manos, pues ver cómo, eh, qué pueden hacer, ¿no? Este, cómo publicitarlo, ¿no? Cómo, este hacer este, la promoción de, del disco y bueno, pues le pareció que era una buena idea, ¿no? Que pudieran hacer en un futuro este, que, se, que salieran que saliera el festival por otro lado, pues le dije, oye, bueno, ¿qué, qué posibilidad hay de que venga Speed Anger a Latinoamérica? Que vinieran a hacer fechas a, este, a México a, pues, en, pues, se volvieron, a, volvieron a, a Colombia punto. y que se volvieron a, 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 venir, a venir a México con, con una Así es, Dani Sí, muy bueno, cerca, hacer cinco que fechas que por acá. Que a punto de llegar a México iban a hacer Ajá. cinco fechas pero en esos momentos estaban en la, en la transición de los vocalistas y Así por esa situación ya no pudieron llegar. Es una, es una verdadera pena, una verdadera lástima sí, que no vinieran a México. Sí, sí, sí. Son una gran banda. De verdad, sería un deleite tenerlos. Sí, por ejemplo, a los organizadores del, del Hell and Heaven. Sí, creo que eh, monaría perfecto para el Hell and Heaven o, o, sí, o para el Nation. Sería sí, muy bueno. Podría encajar perfectamente Speed sí, Anger. Yo, yo, sí. yo lo pondría contra los fuertes también. Como una sí, banda sorpresa, ¿no? Seguramente les gustaría aquí mucho yo. El sonido de ellos es bastante, este, bastante bueno, bastante ponchado, como decimos. Sí, muy, muy potente. Muy, 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 muy potente. Ponchado, y que a mucha gente le va a encantar. Exacto, van a, va a haber mucho, va a haber mucha atracción por esta banda. Sí, este, sí es. este nada, ya, ¿Qué ya, hago yo? ¿Qué hacemos, Rockspool? Este, va, 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 si, que... si, quiere, si quieres, échate ya la, la, la última, ya tenemos el. La, la, la hora encima, hay que dejarle todavía un, po, un poquito más a los, a los rockers para la siguiente visita. Pero échate, échate, la vas, 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 mi movida, se vas. Perfecto. Ah, hey guys, bueno, les voy, a preguntar, les voy a preguntar acerca de un dato de, de, Lars, de Lars Ulrich, que esa es una pregunta que tenemos que hacer, obviamente. Sí, sí, sí. Aunque, sí, aunque algunos no nos gusta. Voy a contar un poco una, una, es una pequeña anécdota de lo que me sucedió cuando nos fui a Suecia, y les quiero preguntar si sucede algo similar. In, in Dinamarca con Lars Ulrich. Guys, uh, here's a question uh, I was telling the audience. This, this is something that happened to me when I went to Sweden. Uh, I don't know if you guys like football. Football? Football. Uh, like actually, football? not that much. Well, there's a, there's a, <laughs> <laughs> I used to watch a lot of football, but not, not, uh, not there, there much. Guy, this, this guy, the, a Swedish uh, coach, that is uh, Sven Joran Eriksson. Uh -huh. so, so when, when I went to Sweden, I turned on, on the TV and there was an image of Sven Joran Eriksson. There was a magazine with Sven Joran Eriksson. Every, everywhere he, you look, he was there. So my okay. question is, does this happen with Lars Ulrich in, in Denmark? Do you, <laughs> you go to a hotel, you turn the TV and there's Lars Ulrich. You go to the, to the toilet and the toilet paper has to, have to stay. Something like that. <laughs> Lars Ulrich toilet paper? Wow. <laughs> well, I, I, love, I love Lars. Do you no, that? No, understand this, please. <laughs> I love him. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't experienced it. Well, I, I think... I mean, Lars is living obviously in, in, in I think he's living in San Francisco, yeah. I think. But oh, really? uh, whenever he's he's here, when he comes here with the with doing and promotion of, of album or whatever, he's go, he's on all the TV channels. He's yeah. all the you know like all yeah. the evening shows and all that kind of stuff and and all the newspapers. So because it is something that Denmark is proud of. Denmark is proud of Lars Ulrich. There's no doubt about well, that. He's, he's like a, a hero. He's like a hero in. in well, in, in, it's interesting to say that it's not metal people who thinks he's a hero, which is, and that's an interesting discussion. But for normal people, because he's one of the, he's our, he's Danish, so he's our son, and he went to the big world and became a big rock oh, star. So, so all the meteors and the mainstream cool. meteors are very proud that's of really him. Cool. But mm -hmm. in the metal, myth, I mean, you've seen what happened in the metal communities around the world. Everybody yes. is bashing Lars Ulrich because he's a bad drummer or whatever. I, oh, I, he's, I, a, he's, he's, a very, he's a very good drummer. I love I him. Agree. He, I agree. He, 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 he made a revolution with drums. Yeah. In, yeah. in, in some, in, I in agree. Some I totally agree. It's, it's the reason that, that, that I started playing drums. So oh, there you go. go. Wow. wow. Yeah, oh, Jonas, the... Jonas told us uh, nice. that he's and that, that's the point that, that, the that that's like yeah. it's become trendy to bash on Lars Ulrich, and I think that's very. It's, it's just ridiculous because the thing is, I mean, 
you can you can have all these opinions to say, oh, but that drama is greater. And yeah, I mean that's great. Yeah, dramas out there, that, but yeah. they didn't yeah. make Metallica. Lars Ulrich exactly. created Metallica. Without Lars Ulrich, Metallica would agree. never. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't. You just can't yeah. shit on that. Metallica is one of the biggest metal band ever. Actually, one of the biggest band ever. You know. Of course. So and Lars Ulrich is a very very central part of that. So yeah, I mean, but, I'm not on that train. I don't, I don't think that. I mean, but, I but Metallica, I Metallica, came, is great drummer. <clears throat> Metallica came came from from Lars Ulrich testicles. That's the thing. That's the thing. I'm sure he would love, sure love to, to, to say that. I think he, he would agree with you. And I, by the way, I, I've actually met I, I've actually met him uh, oh, really? just one time because I, I was doing sound for uh, a band called Nimic, uh, a Danish band, but we were supporting Metallica, so we were on tour with them. Oh, really? and, uh, I mean, I was at, I was there as a sound engineer. I was not playing. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, but but uh, but so I made the whole band. But they, I mean, and they were very very nice people. And and Metallica actually is one of the. It's very interesting to me because at the time I don't know if it's changed, but at the time uh, when you support Metallica, we were I think Machine Head was main support, and then we were second support. Uh, but when you when you support as a as a minor or a smaller band, <laughs> obviously than Metallica, well they make sure that you get paid. I mean, normally for a band like that, they would take money to bring you on tour. But okay. Metallica, they are that big. They don't need support bands. They could go out play without support bands, right? Ooh, so they want to use the yeah. platform to promote bands. So they make sure you get paid, and that's, that's I mean, cool. that is very cool. And very I so cool. and, and by the way, I, I've met James Hetfield a couple of times, and and I would just say that of all the rock stars I've met in the world, he's probably the one of the most coolest, grounded people I've ever met. And I mean, hey, and that's, yeah. I mean, I, I, the, the, the coolest person I've ever met personally for me, uh, the biggest or the biggest idol I've ever met was Philip Anselmo. And he was also very, very cool and also very nice. And I was actually surprised how nice he was. But but James, wow. James, I feel he's, 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 he makes a, he, he makes a big effort of, of being, you know, down to earth. It's really important to him. And uh, I, I appreciate that as a person very much. I think he's very cool. Wow. So. You won't hear me bashing on Metallica as, at all. I mean, I think that's oh. one of the biggest bands ever. Absolutely. Ever in the world. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Ahora, oh. Movidas, que seguramente es el que más va a querer traducir esto como nunca. Sí, por favor, Movidas. Sí, date, date. Todavía date. está en shock. Date, güey. Uh, let me translate this because I, I love Metallica. I'm a huge fan and I'm a huge fan of, of Lars Ulrich. So these guys are letting me translate this one. So... Sí, si no, si no el movida nos va a aventar botellas en la cabeza, date, mijo. So, eh, bueno, aquí Rockers, la verdad es que estoy muy emocionado por todo lo que acaban de mencionar. Este, la verdad es que sí, nos estaban comentando lo que nos llama mucho la atención, es que no solamente la gente que es metalera en Dinamarca es, este, tiene como héroe nacional a Lars Ulrich, sino que toda la gente lo tiene como el hijo de, de Dinamarca, el hijo de la nación, como... Una, una, de verdad es que casi como una deidad, porque hizo cosas que mucha gente no pensaría que lograría fuera de Dinamarca. Entonces, es algo muy, muy, muy interesante. También nos estaban comentando de, de cómo es eh, el trato de Lars Ulrich, el trato de James Hetfield, pero sobre todo de Lars Ulrich, dicen que tuvieron la oportunidad Rasmus, de conocerlo. Él fue ingeniero de audio en alguna ocasión con, con Metallica. Y también nos comentaban acerca de, de, de las bandas que tratan, de que las bandas que van a digamos que van como teloneras o algo, tratan de buscar siempre, de recibir el, el, el apoyo de los que Metallica siempre buscas, en lugar de que muchas veces digan las bandas, ¿sabes qué? Pues si quieres, tocas y nada más te presentas y tan tan, no, Metallica busca que siempre les paguen, les paguen. que siempre, siempre busca apoyar mucho a las bandas, siempre busca sí. hacer, no, no, todo, no todo Metallica es Napster y lo que sucedió y tal, la oportunidad, la, ¿no? a la, las ha, bandas ha habido bandas. muchas cosas, de hecho también este, la fundación, no acabo yo otra hora que me aventé el concierto eh, All Within My Hands esta fundación está muy, muy interesante. Después hablaremos, a ver, una, estuve platicando con Rock School. Vamos a hacer una sesión de todo ese tema de, de las fundaciones que tienen las bandas. Sí, es eh, bueno, Within ¿no? My Hands, una fundación que ha apoyado a desastres naturales, como los, las, bueno, así que todo el tema de terremotos, todo lo que, de, lo que sucedió en California. Ha habido muchas Ajá. cosas y apoyan con eso, apoyan con bastante dinero, un millón de dólares, 750 mil dólares por un lado. O sea, todo eso, Metallica hace muchas cosas que igual no nos damos cuenta, y hay mucha gente que ataca mucho Metallica, incluido a Rock School, que también los ama, pero bueno. Pero sí, realmente, realmente lo que nos contaban ellos, este, este tema, este acercamiento con, 
con Metallica, con Lars Ulrich, el amor que le tiene Lars Ulrich, que, que es, un, es una muy buena persona, es una muy buena en el trato, que James Hetfield también este, que es, una, es que es un ser muy aterrizado, que es muy, muy tranquilo, que a pesar de cómo Los pies es, en la tierra, ¿no? Sí, que James, a pesar de lo que es James, ah. lo que es James para el mental, que es, es muy, muy, muy aterrizado. Eso, 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 eso deja hablar mucho, muy bien de, de Metallica. Eh, Rock School, ¿quieres preguntarles sí, aquí? No, de, de hecho, que, 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 que Jonas... Que, que, viene, que, viene. que de hecho, Jonas comenzó a, a, a tocar el batería gracias a Lars, ¿no? Exacto. Empeñado en él. Exacto, exacto. Pues estamos casi que, que llegando en la, en la recta final de esta rock entrevista. ¿Qué les parece si este, nos vamos con ellos aquí? A preguntarles algo de qué, qué es lo que sigue, qué es lo que va a venir en el 2021. Con... Exacto, y dónde, dónde, los puedes, dónde los puede seguir la banda también, ¿no? para todos los, 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 que, no, los, los que no los conocían, que obviamente se los recomendamos simplemente, de verdad, mm. rockers no saben qué pinche bando una chulada, una joven, ¿eh? una joven, Les va a gustar la poderosa. A, a, lo, a, a, a todos los que les, a todos los que les gustó Testament, a todos los que les gustó Pantera, Pantera. Todos tienen que seguir, no, no saben qué banda, qué, qué, qué potencia, qué nivel de música, los tienen que seguir, ahorita nos van a contar qué sigue y nos van a contar dónde seguirlos, y por favor háganlo, Rockers, háganos pinches caso y escúchenlos. <risa> Guys, we were, we were saying to the audience that uh, what we are, we are about to end the, the interview, so we, we would like to know, all the audience what, would like to know What next with the Speed Danger? There's there there are going to be the tours. There will be something. Well, if it, it's possible, right? So what is, what is what we what can we expect from Speed Danger? And we also we were uh, saying to the audience that we love your music. And when uh, the the people the, also you can tell the people uh, where can you tell your Twitter, your Facebook, so the people can follow you guys and listen to your music. Because it's really, it's really great to, to, to find music, musicians like you, metalheads like you, that do this great music with great lyrics. We great uh, we, we love you guys. We love you. And Thank we you, want man. to see you. Thank you. We are we you great, great, fans, great concept. Very, very powerful band. Thank you, guys. Thank you, man. Thank you. We're very happy to hear that. Well, I mean, the, I know what you want to do, right? You want to go out and play. Want to tour the whole world? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's actually Mexico City. Mexico City. Mexico City. Mexico City. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Please, please, But, please. And that's actually what the, the thing is. That is what Spreading is about. Is playing live actually playing because live. we do the albums. And but we do them to come out and play live because that's what we love. We love playing music live for an audience. I mean, yeah, we have Corona right now, so it's not really possible to do. I mean, we have concerts here, but. It's not the same. People have to be sitting down and it's very few people at the time and stuff like that. So, I mean, we're taking our time, making the album great. So when it's over, and it will be over, I'm sure of it, it's going to be over. Yeah. I think we are seeing okay. the end of it now. I think that 2021 is going to be, you know, hopefully during the summer, we're going to get a, a normal summer. Uh, maybe not festivals, but we'll, we'll start to see the end of it uh, quite soon, I think. And when we can... Go out and play live. We will go out and play live because that's what we want to do. That's what it's all about. And we 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 want to tour as far as as, as many places and go as far as we can. Where, where everybody wants us, man. We'll we, we'll be there. We will we'll go. So uh, so we appreciate that and we thank you very much for the fine and kind words. We are happy to uh, oh, that no, you, thank you, guys. Thank you bringing us on the on the show, man. It's, it's been a pleasure. Absolutely, you're welcome man. in Mexico City. Oh, great. We, of we, course, we, this, this is your home. Anyway, make it possible, we'll go. So, uh, and, and, and if, if you said, uh, I mean, it's quite easy to find us because we are speedanger.com, speedanger at Facebook, Facebook at Twitter slash speedanger. I mean, it's Instagram slash speedanger. So it's just, it's, I mean, it's right there, right, right, right there, <laughs> yeah. the name. So, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, Just Google us, man. We'll find us. We're everywhere. And, and also, the music is out there. All the music we've done is free. You can find free. all the music on yes. YouTube. You can find it on our website. You can just download if you want. It's, it's available right now. You can hear everything. We have quite a few videos on YouTube. So just go check it out, man. It's there. Okay. Well, uh, thanks a lot. Let, let's translate to the, to the audience. Okay. Okay. Just get a minute. Well, eh, bueno, gente, nos, toda la gente, los rockers, nos están, nos están diciendo aquí que, que sí están esperando este, salir de tour. Nos están diciendo que igual amenazan con venir a México, lo cual sería chulísimo. Ojalá, ojalá. 
Sí, Están increíble. esperando eh, terminar, terminar su disco, salir a dar la vuelta por todo el mundo. Jonas dice que quiere ir por todo el mundo. Y creo que también Rasmus va, va por la misma línea. La verdad, estamos este, muy contentos de haber tenido aquí a, a Speed Anger, una gran banda, una gran banda. La verdad es que mucho metal, mucho poder. La verdad, estamos de verdad que muy orgullosos de tener una, una banda por acá. Así como sí, un, un verdadero honor. La, y, no sé, Mike, Mike T, algo, algo que quieras agregar. Pues, eh, no, pues yo quiero agradecerles este, a Speed Anger. I want to thank you for being here in the interview. And we hope to see you very soon in person, in, alive, at the stage. Great, yeah. And, and, and we, uh, we wish you success in your projects in the next album and in the lyrics and everything. It would be, it would be great. Eh, muchas gracias, amigos, este, por, por estar aquí con nosotros, este, agradeciéndole a, a Speed Anger. Y bueno, pues esperando que estén próximamente, próximo año, este, aquí que vengan a hacer shows y, este, y que pues, eh, les deseamos mucho éxito con los proyectos y, este, y su nuevo disco. Así que, este, pues yo también agradecerles a ustedes por la entrevista, queridos amigos. Thanks a lot, guys. Rock School, adelante. Thanks a, thanks a lot, guys. Thank, thank you for thank being here. Thank you, guys. We, we take care. It's, it's and, uh, a very take pleasure. Take care of yourself, okay? Hey, hey guys, can, can we expect a, a second interview in, in the future when you get your album done, when you are touring or something? Can we expect that for all the rockers that are in the audience right now? You want us to watch, Harry? Uh, a second interview, the, the, the second part of this interview. Oh, yeah. In the future, when you when you get when, your, when you have your, your next Absolutely. material ready, Absolutely. this is your house. We would love to do that, man. Broker is your house, exactly. Broker is your house. So, so if, if you like, it's a promise. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, we'll Pretty be cool back. Guy. Promise, man. Done. If you want us, we'll be back. Done. So, so, so thanks so. a lot. Uh, y vamos a tener vamos a tener Speed Tanger en una segunda vuelta cuando esté sacando su álbum y cuando esté en el tour. La verdad que, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks a lot, Thank guys. We love you. Keep rocking and keep metal. For you, guys. See you Take very care. soon. You. Take care. Thank Bye. you, guys. Señores, nos retiramos. Nos largamos nos a comer. Muchas gracias a todos. No dejen de rockear, cabrones. Estamos viendo. Bye-bye. Chao. Bye. -bye. Bye.